The RV life that you see on YouTube and Instagram is a myth. Those influencers make it look amazing, right? They're out there on beaches going for hikes. They're in the mountains and chilling with friends. And they make it look so perfect. Well, I'm here to tell you that RV life is rarely easy and it's never perfect. In fact, sometimes it sucks. And today, I'm going to give you my top eight reasons why. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I'm doing great. I'm here inside of my RV. I've been a full-timer for seven years, but before I went on the road, I voraciously watched these YouTube videos and went on to Instagram, and I saw people that made it look so perfect, and I wanted to believe that it was all true. Living or traveling in an RV is not some magical unicorn that's going to change your life and make it perfect. It's rad. I love it, but I love my real RV life. So today, I'm going to give you the real scoop on why sometimes it sucks. The first thing and the biggest thing for me is maintenance and repairs. Living in an RV is not like living in a house. When you're going down the road, it's like an earthquake is hitting the inside of your rig. I remember when my YouTube friend Liz Amazing put a camera inside the back of her house while it was going down the road and she said what she saw almost made her throw up because everything was moving. The maintenance is constant. Depending on what kind of a rig you have, you're going to have to maintain the roof, the slides, the legs, the tires, the hydraulic system, the dump system, and so much more. And don't get me started on repairs. If you follow my channel, you know that I've had to do just about every kind of repair out there. These repairs are expensive and they take time. And if you take your rig to a dealership, be prepared for it to take months to go off the road and to frequently not even have whatever was wrong with it fixed. I found that you have to fix a lot of things yourself and you have to keep money in your budget for repairs if you can't. And there's this. If something breaks inside of your rig, it's not that easy to get the parts that you need. It's not like you can run down to Home Depot and get the motor for the fan that just went out. You have to find it and order it and then have a place to ship it. The second reason RV life sucks is the driving. Remember, these rigs are tall and light. So if there's any wind at all, you're going to get knocked around. And not only that... But people on the road do not want to be near you. They don't want to be behind you. They don't want to be next to you. In fact, look at this clip that I just caught this year in Joshua Tree where I pulled up to a stoplight and some jack wagon was so anxious to get past me that he ran a red light and almost hit a bus. And then there's the parking. Depending on how big your rig is, it can be really hard to just go out and do your daily chores like doing laundry or going to the grocery store. In my fifth wheel, I have to look at a satellite view of everywhere I go before I go to make sure that there's a place for me to park. And I've been on dead end streets where I have to turn around and that's not like a three point turn or an eight point turn, that's like a 12 point turn. And this is a little bit off topic, but if you need to get your transmission fixed or get an oil change, if you have an all-in-one kind of a rig, it's hard to find a place that will do that. Sometimes we're too tall to get into a Jiffy Lube, or it's hard to find a repair shop that will work on rigs like yours. The next reason RV life can suck is because it takes a lot of planning. This is something I didn't hear anybody talk about. They made it look so easy. Last year, I interviewed four full-time female nomads, and one of them said that the biggest surprise she had when she went on the road was how much planning it took. She said she spent about four hours every time she moved camp. Why? Because depending on the size of your rig, you really have to plan out your route and the grade up or down on the roads and bridge height. And if you boondock like I do, you could be going down some country roads that you should not be going down because somebody on a review driven app said it was great. The truth is you have to check that out before you go. Don't believe anybody else. You have to go into Google Earth and look for the most recent reviews. 
And if you want to stay in a campground, that can also be hard because if you're bigger, it's harder to get a reservation. And not only that, if your rig is 10 years old or older, a lot of campgrounds won't even accept you. Honestly, the planning can be kind of fun. When I'm in the maps and I'm trying to find places to go and camp and the routes that I want to take, I find places to go that I never even knew were there. So that's cool. But just know that it takes a lot of time. And that brings me to the next reason RV life sucks, which is the chores. The chores are never ending. When I thought about going on the road, I thought, yeah, that destination is three hours away, three hours and 15 minutes, and I'm going to be there sitting in a camp chair. That is not true. You have to do so much when you're en route from one place to another, like getting water and dumping your tank and getting groceries and then navigating your way down the road. And then once you get there, you have to set up camp and break camp and everything takes so much time and that's without the maintenance and the repairs and the planning. And then if you want to put an awning out and the wind kicks up, you have to put the awning back in. Everything is constantly changing and you have to maintain it. That is a chore. So maintenance and repairs, driving, planning, and chores are a lot. And I'm going to tell you about the next four things in just a second. But now is a great time to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Wayfair Vans. Now, you may have seen me recently going out in a Wayfair van. They were nice enough to loan me one for a couple of weeks. I went out to Moab and I visited them at their factory. They are fantastic. And I want to tell you about them because they really opened up my eyes to another way to go. Before I hit the road, I thought I needed so much stuff. I thought I needed the slides. I thought I needed the levelers. I didn't need all that. Wayfair vans are different because they're simple. They're still quality, but they're simple and they're inexpensive. What they do is build out vans for people so they can hit the road that has everything done. The lighting, the insulation, the power, everything. But it's simple, so there's a lot less to break. When I was in the Wayfair van, I kept looking around going, wow, this is a lot easier. I don't have to worry about the roof or the slides or the legs or getting a new water pump or fixing all of the stuff that usually goes wrong in my other rigs. Now, a Wayfair is not for everybody. If you want a really swanky rig or even a swanky van, it's not the one for you. It's not gonna have a giant shower and recliners and a big screen TV. But if you want a rig that just gets you to these beautiful locations without having to worry about everything else, a Wayfair is a great option. I was literally shocked at how much their builds are. You provide the van, they do the build, you go on their website and build out what you want in their different floor plans and then talk to one of them, they're rad. And like a month later, without having to do the work yourself, DIY, your van is ready to go. Then it's yours and you can make it your own. Go into Facebook and look at the Wayfarian community. There are a ton of images and stories from people that get these vans and do the coolest things with them and lead the coolest lives. And one of the best things about the Wayfarer system is that most of the components inside the van can be taken out in just a few minutes with a wrench. So if you want to use your van for another purpose, like a job or moving, or just use it seasonally, or go sell it, it's a great option. I will put the link for them down below. Go check them out. Moving on to the next reason RV life can suck, and that is weather. And believe me, I have been through all of it. I have been in severe heat. Okay, you guys, decision made. It's just too freaking hot in here. I rode out a bomb cyclone in Colorado where my RV was literally picked up three feet and moved. Last year when I was in my Airstream, I was in an RV park without a skirt when it was negative 11 outside. The inside of the aluminum had frost all over it. When you're in an RV, you have to constantly be looking at the weather. So this is another really bad storm, it's hailing. We all say we're chasing 70 degrees, and that's nice, and I do, but sometimes that's just not possible. Like when I was in that bomb cyclone, there was no outrunning it. If you saw like six weeks ago, 
my little baby Airstream was hit by a big hailstorm. My friend Debbie, who was next to me, actually had her rig totaled out, and that storm came out of the blue. But it's okay. You manage it, like you manage the heat with Reflectix. You manage the frozen pipes. Everything is a trade-off. Just know that if you're going to be in an RV, even as a weekend warrior or a full-timer, you gotta look out for the weather. The next thing that can suck about RV life is choosing and using your residency state. Now, when you're on the road, you still have to choose a resident state. That's the state that you use for everything like your driver's license, your insurance, your registration, maybe voting. If you have more questions about this topic, check out my book, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life. It's available now on Amazon. It has a whole section on this with links to help you understand what your options are. You can get into a lot of trouble with something called a nexus, which looks at how much time you actually spend in a state and where you're getting your income and you can get into a lot of trouble with the IRS if you screw this up. The next reason RV life can suck is the internet. Now, I know a lot of people say, I go out in my RV because I want to disconnect and be in nature, and I don't want my phone to ring, and I don't want to see my emails or my text messages or social media. That's all fine. But for most of us, we need to be connected in some way. And for me, I need to have a lot of data for my job. If you're working remotely, that's probably true for you. And if you want to work remotely, you can also check out my book, Work From Home While You Roam, The Ultimate Guide to Jobs That Can Be Done From Anywhere, which has well over 300 real jobs with links to apply in all kinds of categories for all kinds of people. But those jobs require an internet signal. Being in an RV is not like being in a house where you probably have internet service that comes through a cable. On the road, you're gonna to have to have Wi-Fi, which means you're gonna to have to use the hotspot on your phone, which is probably capped, or Wi-Fi at the library or McDonald's, which sucks, or you have to get a travel router, which is expensive and also has capped data. Personally, I have unlimited Verizon on my phone, I have an unlimited AT&T router that I get from AT&T Business. It's not available to the regular public if you need to look for that. And I have Starlink. So I have to pay for all of that. But I consider it infrastructure for my mobile RV life. It's like my office expense because I have to have a signal. The final reason RV life can suck is the stigma. Now I'll tell you, this has gotten a lot better since I went on the road. When I discovered this life and told people I was gonna do it, they all thought I was crazy. They didn't get it. Like me, they never heard of BLM. They didn't know that being in an RV full time was an option for people that weren't yet retired and that if you went out in an RV, you didn't have to stay in an RV park. There were beautiful places you could go. But I had to explain this to everybody. Now, because of van life and how popular everything's gotten, when I tell people what I do and how I live, I would say about half of them say, oh my God, that's so rad, I wish I could do that. And just so you know, you can, I did it, you can do it. The flip side of that is people that think when you're out in an RV, you're just taking it easy because of all of those influencer images that you're just out in a camp chair and you're just chilling and you're just enjoying yourself and you're some kind of a hippie slacker. Most of the people that I know on the road are working. This life is not for everybody. It can seem a little bit unorthodox, but it's definitely for me and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Even though all of these things can kind of suck, the trade-off for me is worth it. I am not stuck in rush hour. I'm not stuck in a cubicle. I'm not stuck trying to pay off a bunch of debt. Instead, I go and I still work in these beautiful, idyllic places that I saw from those influencers before I hit the road, and I set up and work, and that's my backyard, and that can be very cool. But it's not some magical life that doesn't come with its challenges, and I wanted to tell you guys what it was really like. Please, in the comments below, tell me what you think. Do you have anything about your RV life that sucks that you want everyone else to know about? Or do you have some concerns? Let's help each other. I'll see you guys next week with an all new Sunday video. Until then, everybody out there, 
Have happy travels and be free.